Welcome back to the impromptu concept art mini series. We're on episode two and today I want to go in with a little more pre-planning. So if you watched last week's video, you know that we did some exploratory scribbles on paper and some of these definitely caught my eye, so to speak. So today I want to further explore one of these designs and that is the crazy eyeball monster. In this video we're going to explore a few post thumbnails, use said thumbnails to flesh out the story a little bit and also maybe think about outfits and such. Then of course we'll pick and choose details until we have a properly fully done coloured concept. I'm really enjoying this horror vibe these days, so if you are as well, then give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more art content. You can always come say hello on social media, links are down in the description. And that's about everything, so let's dive in. So this time around, instead of just trying to draw over the original scribble sketch, I wanted to explore the character a lot more because I feel like last week the story was too vague until too late in the process. So today we're going to start with some thumbnails, just quick little sketches to see what the character might look and feel like in a few different poses. The first one was just a simple dejected girl and the huge eye floating behind her just watching. That was the initial idea and it was alright for a basic summary of the relationship between the character and the monster. Just a trapped codependent relationship, one is the victim, the other is the perpetrator. Then I thought to explore this relationship what if the girl actually thought to take the blindfold off? How would that change the relationship? Would a tiny peek at independence set the monster off? Perhaps it would use its tentacle slash optic nerve thingy to try and bind her other arm in place so she can't take the whole thing off and is still partially under the control of the monster. For the third thumbnail, I actually wanted to explore what it might feel like if she felt an intense sensation, perhaps holding fire in her hands. I feel like that might make the monster happy, like a whole I set myself on fire to keep you warm type relationship. For the final thumbnail, I considered what it might be like if the girl were to go inward and explore her own self a little more. Learn about who she is as an individual, her own inner power and such. I think that might make the monster truly afraid because it means she doesn't need to escape it in order to feel independent and the monster then has no hold on her. Alright, I think we understand most facets of this relationship. Let's now explore some outfit choices. I immediately thought of how it might be if she were wearing an armor that was starting to fall off her to reveal her true self. I actually really like this, but for the sake of exploration, the next one was a more flowy dress type deal. I immediately did not like that one because it's a little unrelated, honestly. Finally, I experimented with just some jewellery and that seemed super fun as well. What if we grabbed the jewellery and put it under the armour? Like deep under the heavily armoured facade, there's just these delicate, pretty jewels. Alright, I think I know what we're gonna draw. Let's put together a proper concept now.
Okay, even though we've explored the entire timeline of the relationship between this girl and her monster, I think the actual concept should best exemplify the basis of their dynamic. So I definitely went with the initial despair for the girl as she tries to escape and the monster looking on angrily. I also thought maybe her hair is what the monster attaches to. The hair is usually symbolic of pride and ego, and I do think a lot of us have very bruised egos that tend to act out in angry ways in order to try and protect us. I did a couple different iterations of the sketch, still exploring details here and there. And finally, it was time to colour. In order to maintain that eerie, creepy vibe, I decided to go with muted blues, teals and purples for both the character and the eye, and then have little pops of red and gold as the accent. Just an overall split complementary palette, verging on tetradic. Just like last week, I decided the best light setup was a simple overhead key light with shadows sticking to the underside. Nothing too dramatic though, we want to bear in mind that we're concepting. So the simpler and brighter the light is, the clearer our concepts appear. And with the base tones and values in, it is time to refine. This concept really caught my eye because it felt familiar. I constantly struggle with the paranoia of being watched and judged, even if I'm literally just sat around doing nothing. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt this way as well, that sense of nothing you ever do being good enough because there is an angry voice inside your mind telling you you're doing it wrong. It is so damaging because that voice really convinces you that you're just completely incapable of doing things right or seeing the whole truth of any situation. It creates a sort of distrust within yourself and that, in my opinion, is the most damaging thing in the world. Not being able to count on yourself to do the right thing, make the right choice or even just be your own safe space. The process of working on this painting was strange because it kind of gave me the most random bout of depression and the second I finished it and exported it to PNG, the depression like magically disappeared? I don't understand it, is this art therapy? It sure felt cathartic. <laughs> I struggled a little bit with trying to figure out the right value for the background because anything too dark took away from the silhouette but anything too light took away from the drama. But finally, after some specular highlights and final details, here's our second concept piece, Paranoia. What do you think? Okay, this one turned out so much better and I'm so, so into the genre of concept, you guys. But what do you think? Do you think it works with my style? Comment below and let me know. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, then let me know by giving it a big thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button for more art content every week. And you can also come say hello on Instagram, Discord and Kara. Links to all of those are down in the description below. And if you enjoy my work and would like to support it and grab extra rewards every single week, such as all of my art in 8K quality, all the step-by-steps for each of my paintings, the speed paints from start to finish, my complete custom brush kit, and of course, prints of my work, it is all up on Patreon. Your support on there really allows me to keep making all this cool content for YouTube. So I'll leave a link up here in the cards and in the video description. And thank you so much for checking it out.
Alrighty you guys, that's about everything for this video. So thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. In case you missed last week's video, we did a few exploratory concept sketches as well as a quick horror concept. So um, I definitely think you'll enjoy it and learn something from that video. So I'll leave it here in the outro. Make sure you check it out and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.